to another episode of Hot and Healthy, and I'm delighted to introduce you all to Liz Keeney, who is the author of a fantastic book that she's going to let you know all about. And she's also the creator of The Kindness Code, and she's a cancer survivor as well. So she has a fantastic short story. Let's get straight into it. Welcome to the show, Liz. Thanks, Nicole. We've done a podcast together, but I really wanted to get you on the show because your story is quite amazing, and you really have something, created something special from your experience that's really making a difference in people's lives and I'd love you to share that here on SNAP TV. Thank you for asking me. Um, well yes, my backstory is that I was diagnosed with cancer not once but twice within the space of 12 months. I'm pleased to say that I am no longer that story. That was nine years ago. Um, but when I actually uh, received the second diagnosis, um, something very, very strange happened in so much as I, I heard a voice inside of my own head which really was a wake-up call. Um, the voice actually uh, said to me, don't blame yourself for what's happening here, but effectively told me to step into my own power um, and encouraged me to start to find some answers in terms of what I could do to take responsibility for my own health. Uh, that did take me on a wonderful journey. Um, if you come back in my life over nine years ago you would have seen me in corporate life most days very very stressed most days very very harassed and most days actually just ticking off the days on the calendar to my next vacation um, but it took me on a beautiful journey actually uh, which started in the library which sounds an odd place to start <laughs> but i distinctly remember walking out of the hospital uh, deciding that i needed to find some answers and a good place to start would be to understand what I could put into my body. Mm. So you can picture me on that day um, in the library, absolutely overwhelmed with the vast choice of books on food and nutrition. And I thought that I had a pretty good understanding of what a good diet was, um, or to use your expression, I know your eating regime, mm. I don't like the word diet either. Uh, but actually what I found out very, very quickly was that the information that I thought was helpful was very, very skewed. Mm. Um, and so I, on that day, I ended up taking 12 books out of the library and just absolutely immersed myself into what could I do? What could I do to empower myself? And so it was less about what I needed to remove from my eating regime, but more about what great things could I put into mm. my eating regime. It's a great shift. A lot of people are thinking about deprivation and what am I going to lose. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. So it was completely the other way around. And, and it was like a, kind of a bit of an aha moment in so much as, do you know what? I could eat loads more, you know? And uh, that's... That sort of progression just became wonderfully, wonderfully uh, empowering for me to know that even if I decided to go ahead and take the conventional treatment, then I was really doing this as an integrated approach. Mm. Um, but it didn't stop there. My journey didn't stop there. And um, uh, I know we spoke before, but you know, the universe has, a, has its way, if you like, of showing you on your path. And uh, I distinctly remember the day when I was in a bookshop looking at yet more books on nutrition and something just made me turn this way. And there was a book that was leaning out of the bookshelf and I instinctively took that book and I read the back page which described one man's amazing journey back to complete health after being diagnosed with a degenerative disease. And I remember thinking, well, that doesn't happen, does it? It was his self-healing journey. And I was intrigued, but I was also quite ashamed. I don't mind saying this, mm. because I looked at the sign above this shelf, which said, self-help. And here I was, suited and booted, in my corporate attire, and all of a sudden feeling ever so slightly flaky and vulnerable that Liz Keeney is taking a book from the self-help shelf. <laughs> um, and so I wrote about it in my own book, Warrior Women, uh, the fact that that book was the catalyst for changing my life because that book helped me see that we are so much more than our, our physicality. Mm. It helped me understand the complete 
worth of nutrition, but it opened my mind to the fact that we are an energy body, mm. an energy that's within us, an energy that is outside of us. And then that took me on a very, very personal journey in terms of taking responsibility or developing a new relationship with myself in terms of how I was feeding my mind. Mm. A different kind of food. A different kind of food and made me understand so much more about emotional health mm. and how we unwittingly feed ourselves metaphorically toxins mm. through the emotional baggage that we hold on to. Mm. So that was a profound journey for me. Um, and then the progression really from that was then understanding my spiritual self mm. and connecting with the truth of who I really am. Mm. And then how has that led on to the creation, if you like, the, the evolution of Liz? into the warrior woman and into this kindness code creator? Well, I realized that, um, you know, I, I started wanting to share everything that I'd learned and, and it, it became, yeah, I've used the expression so many times, it was like, I cannot not share this, mm. you know? Uh, we kind of go on this journey and you think, well, you're, you're so kind of, you want to heal the world and I understand that, you know, it takes one person at a time, but it's like, I can't really hold on to all of this information. I need to share this. And the Kindness Code was born, uh, actually just in a very, very quiet moment. One of the, uh, the things that I did as a, as a ritual for myself was I started doing something called Qigong, um, which is not so well known about. Um, over here, um, but basically, it's it, for me, it's a grounding exercise. It's it's like a, a meditation with very gentle movement. But in giving myself time to have that space, of course, your mind unravels itself. Mm -hmm. And I can remember the day when I just kept hearing this word, the code, the code. Ah, oh, that. What's the code? I thought. It's the kindness code. Mm. What I do is I help busy, intelligent people be kinder to themselves in terms of how they nurture their body, how they feed their mind, and how they connect with the truth of who they really are. And so when I unraveled the code in my own mind, I realized that the C-O-D-E stood for something very specific. Mm. The C stands for living our lives consciously, so having an absolute awareness of our level of self-nurture, our level of self-worth, and our level of self-connection. The O stands for opportunity, because life is an opportunity, but we have to understand that it is an opportunity of choice. And so, if we're stuck, we need to change. Mm. The D stands for dream or desire, which I think is very pertinent, because I opened by saying that in my old corporate life, the extent of my dream and desire was just ticking the days off on the calendar to my next vacation. Now I have a massive, massive dream, a massive, massive desire. But the D also stands for deserving, mm. because what I've understand, understood with myself, my own relationship, but also with the people that I've had the privilege of dealing with, is that we sabotage our very, very best endeavours by something that says, you don't deserve it. Mm. It's just something, it's a belief system within us. And the E stands for energy. So, you know, when all is said and done, everything is energy. So our thoughts, our feelings, particularly our feelings, mm. our intentions, our actions are all energy. Fabulous. Just going back to that deserving, where do you think we get the idea that we're not deserving of kindness? Mm. I think that's a brilliant, brilliant question. So I think in terms of what I've unraveled is that it's, it's an archetypal thing. Um, I have the privilege of working with men, but predominantly women. And I think as women, we tend very much to be the nurturers of others. So many women I see put themselves right at the bottom of their list. Mm. They're so busy making sure that everybody else is all right. And when I suggest to them, put your own oxygen mask on first, you can't help anyone unless you help yourself. Mm. It is a bit of a light bulb moment. Mm. And you know, it's just a simple thing, but 
we fill our minds with all of these excuses that we don't have time for ourselves. Mm. And so I, th I believe it is an archetypal thing really, very much with women. And it's something that if we've been taught to believe that we come last and everyone else comes before us, that we can unlearn that, we can teach ourselves a different belief system which may end up with us all living our lives a little bit differently. Magnificently, I mm. call it. So, you know, I help people step into what I refer to as their inner magnificence. So mm. it is very much that, that once we understand that we are worthy, we are deserving, then we can live our lives with passion and purpose and the potentiality of our life is infinite. Mm. Because once we've actually quashed this, I don't deserve it, I'm not worthy, then the world is our oyster. Absolutely. So from your own experience, it was really a gift. So yeah. from what you're saying, what's coming up for me is that you were kind of trapped and limited by that suited booted mindset. <laughs> And then the experience of having gone through, you know, two diagnoses of cancer and then going within yourself to find that inner wisdom has mm. resulted in the kindness code mm. and you serving the world in a really, really beautiful way. And mm. it seems like it's very, very successful. So mm. redefining success for you along the way as well. Oh, absolutely. And I think success is a, is, is a very, very good word to use because it's all about our definition of success. You know, for some people, success is just simply getting out of bed in the morning, you know? But my vision of success is, is much more rounded than that, but it's a very, very personal word. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's about really defining what does success look like for you, having that vision, but also what is the feeling? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, one of the, uh, the things that I often say with the women that I work with is that we're not striving for the goal, we're striving for the feeling that is attached to the goal. So our feelings are really the drivers, mm -hmm. always. And you, you can experience that now, if you experience the feeling now of the thing that you want in the future. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. why not, why wait? Yeah. If you want to feel fabulous because you're going to get something later, why not have it in your mind that you feel fabulous right now and exactly. release that great hormones and that great energy through your body? Exactly, exactly. So we've come to the end of the show. It goes so quickly. <laughs> what would you like to leave the listeners with in terms of holistic health and sustainable success? Yeah, okay, so I would like to to leave the listeners with what I call the three R's. So not reading, writing and arithmetic, but it is about us being the student of our own lives. And that is about taking time to have a new relationship with yourself. Really, really uh, taking time to have that self responsibility mm. for your life. It's one life, live it, but make sure you own it. Mm and also making time to have reflection. Mm. You know, life is a wonderful mirror at times. Mm. Give yourself time and space to ask the questions, what is this really trying to show me? Mm. Particularly when things are going not so well. Mm. Great, thank you so much for saying yes to being a guest again thank on you. Hot and Healthy. Thank you. It's a real pleasure. And I encourage everyone who's listening into this to get a copy of Warrior Women, the book. Where can they get access to that? Okay, the book is on Amazon. The book is uh, also available from me directly here in uh, Doha and also available via my website, www.lizkeeney.com. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. And for the listeners out there, be sure to tune in to another episode of Hot and Healthy. Go to Snap TV, find out who else has been on the show. Go to NicoleVanHadam.com and download your free tools. And remember to be hot and healthy. This episode of Hot and Healthy is presented to you by me, Nicole Van Hattem, holistic success coach and best-selling author, and brought to you by Snap TV. Tune into the show and listen to the people and practices that help you to think, eat, thrive.